Who is Jesus? Jesus represents a major figure in the evolution of the world, an initiator, one of the principal initiators of a great period that is now coming to a close in the world. Let us talk about Jesus within the context of the evolution of the world, for this will give you a greater understanding of his role and of the great results that have been demonstrated by his life and by the translation of knowledge that he helped generate. Jesus was sent into the world by his spiritual family to be one of the individuals who would inaugurate a new era in human development and evolution. We call this the era of civilization. The purpose of this era was to slowly take humanity from its tribal identity and tribal isolation towards an international and interracial involvement. This international and interracial involvement has been cataclysmic and very difficult, but it has led to humanity's becoming established in the world not only in its tribal states, but in its larger states representing many races and cultures, ideas and beliefs. Christianity and all the other major religions have fostered a bridge between cultures and between races. These are not simply religions of one tribe or one group. They are religions for all of humanity. This is not to say that everyone can adhere to them, follow them or receive them but they bridge the normal boundaries that seem to separate people and cast them apart. The religion of forgiveness, the religion of reunion with the divine, the religion of human development, the religion of compassion, all of these tremendous movements in the evolution of religion in the world were fostered by the establishment of the world's religions, which have brought the world to its present state. Perhaps you might think that the world is in a terrible state now and that not much has been done to bring humanity to a greater union. However, if you could understand how life was in your world 2500 years ago, you would see how very far you have come. You would see how much your races have intermingled and how much they have found a new basis and foundation for sharing their ideas and their deeper yearnings and inclinations. As we have said repeatedly, religion must serve the world in its current state of evolution. The world's major religions have all evolved the race towards a greater interaction between different peoples. This is especially true of Christianity, which has spanned your globe and now connects people who may otherwise have no association with one another. Now they have a common faith. Now they have common rituals and common observances. This is a remarkable accomplishment in a world that is still deeply mired in tribal identities. The teaching of compassion, forgiveness, and devotion and the example of Jesus all serve to unite people across these great and difficult gaps of separation. Jesus' accomplishment, then, was to help usher in the age of civilization. Civilization in this age is distinct from earlier civilizations which were primarily tribal civilizations. In your current age, civilizations involve not only one tribe and one language, one group or one family, but bridge far beyond these boundaries. And though humanity has quarreled and struggled with itself through all of these transitions and developments, a greater foundation nonetheless has been established for human experience beyond tribal custom and identity. At the time that Christianity was introduced, it was revolutionary. Its emphasis was to spread its message amongst nations and amongst different peoples. It was not only meant for one group or one locale. It was not only meant for one tribe or one nation. Its emphasis was to bridge the gaps between different cultures and different nations to bond people together through a higher association in life and to create a greater foundation for recognition, communication and cooperation. Humanity has been struggling with this challenge ever since, but much progress has been made. Jesus set into motion a direct relationship with the Divine through the intermediary of the Holy Spirit, which in greater community understanding would be defined as knowledge itself. This relationship emphasized the divine reality within each person and the possibility for personal revelation and spiritual development. Humanity has been struggling with this ever since, yet it is a remarkable achievement that Christianity is present in the world and that it is accepted by millions of people in different countries, from different cultures and backgrounds. This is a religion for international civilization, as is true of many of the other religious movements that were initiated in the world and that have advanced into a more modern age. To understand Jesus' contribution, we must look back and see what has occurred. Wisdom indeed can be gained in hindsight here. Life before Jesus and life after Jesus are different. There has been a remarkable change. 
This change took centuries to take full effect, but it did take full effect. In many instances, the spread of Christianity was destructive and immoral. However, it was following an evolutionary track. It had to happen. Just as the world is now preparing to emerge into the greater community, nations in centuries past were destined to interact with each other, to confront each other, to dominate each other and to spread their cultures around the world. This has happened to a very large degree. Now we have world religions rather than simply tribal religions. Given the evolutionary process of cultural and social development in the world, and given the progress and evolution of religious and spiritual understanding, you can see that this has been a great step forward. Religion must always keep pace with the evolution of the race which it is intended to serve. Its ability to do this or its inability to do this will determine how beneficial it will be and how great a service it will render. You are now at a new threshold, an even greater threshold than your race faced over two millennia ago. Your emergence into the greater community will be the greatest challenge and the greatest opportunity your race has ever experienced. This great threshold will be faced by everyone, not simply by one group, one nation or one culture. This is the possibility for genuinely uniting the world. This also has the possibility for separating the races of the world into a final self-destruction. To enable humanity to advance and to adapt to this greater set of circumstances and the greater community and to all the attending problems and opportunities that they will offer, religion must evolve. Though Jesus has established a foundation here, even Christianity must now evolve to meet a whole new set of circumstances. Resistance to greater community awareness in the world today is primarily centered in the world's religions. These are religions for man. They are human religions with a human God and a human emphasis. They do not account for life in the greater community. Yet the reality of life in the greater community will challenge their precepts and will challenge the institutions that have been built upon these precepts. Therefore, it is likely in the years to come that the greatest resistance to the acceptance and realization of greater community life will come from the world's religious leaders and the defenders of their respective faiths. However, religion must keep pace with the evolution of the world. And that is why the greater community way of knowledge is being presented into the world at this time. It has come at just the right time. It gives you a head start in preparation, but even with a head start, time is short because greater community forces are in the world today. Their influence over humanity and their impact on your environment are growing. You must be prepared not only to accept their presence, but to encounter them and to deal with their impact on you, both physically and mentally. This requires a new foundation for religious experience. The world's religions will need this if they are to survive in the next era of human development and evolution. Religions have lifespans. This is true throughout the greater community. Religions have lifespans because they serve eras of development. Then they are either replaced or they change and expand in order to adapt. If they cannot adapt, they will be replaced because the reality of life will make their teaching and their emphasis less and less relevant and meaningful. In the greater community, religions are initiated, they reach a maturity and then they enter old age where they die off. Out of their old age a new impetus, a new meaning and a new message can be given to restore and to renew the race's spiritual vitality and to give this vitality and immediate relevancy to life as it is expanding and developing. Jesus set into motion a great era of development, an era that would serve and challenge people all around the world. His was not the only example, but he was a primary figure. Though he has been idolized and deified, though he has been condemned and scorned, and though he has been used by groups, organizations, tribes and governments for their own purposes, his example still remains the recognition of one person by another across all boundaries of culture, race economic position, language and orientation. His example provided a greater foundation for relationship, a greater foundation for recognition and a greater possibility for mutual development and achievement. This has been necessary for the development of international societies. This has also been necessary for the development and advancement of your race into a technological age. Now you are at a new beginning. Now you have a greater challenge. Jesus knew that his time and place were crucial. 
He knew that he would have to play a very visible role in initiating a process that would extend far beyond his own life and awareness. He knew that the effect of his presence would cause violence, warfare and great tribulation, not only for his followers but for other generations of people to come. However, even he could not see at that time the full extent and impact of his contribution. He could not see how it would be used and how it would be misused and misappropriated in the years and centuries to come. However, he demonstrated a great truth, that a person's purpose, however great or small, however visible or invisible to the eyes of others, must be in accordance with the needs and evolution of the world. Here religion serves whole eras of human development. This is understood from a greater community perspective a perspective which you now have an opportunity to learn and to utilize. In the history of nations more advanced and longer established than yours, and in the experience of civilizations which have destroyed themselves through indulgence, manipulation or ignorance, it is evident everywhere as a universal principle that religions are born, they change and they die. In other words, they have a life. Their life extends far beyond the lives of the individuals who founded them for their service is meant to be correlated to the greater evolution and development of the world in which they were introduced. At this time in your world, certain religious traditions will die. Others will be renewed and reborn and given new emphasis and development. An old Christianity cannot meet a new set of circumstances. It must be a new Christianity, a Christianity that is renewing itself continuously just as within the life and scope of a person's experience. An old orientation cannot meet a new problem, an old belief cannot meet a new set of circumstances, and an old identity cannot interact with a new identity. This is why humanity must be prepared for the greater community. This is why its religious traditions must evolve into this greater arena and participation in life. They must do this without a past reference, for the past is gone and life has changed. Those principles that are universal and timeless must find new expression now. They cannot be held as the vestiges of antiquity. They must find a new expression because that which is permanent must find expression in changing circumstances. The expressions will change. The traditions of expression will change. And the emphasis of expression will change. What Jesus set into motion has universal application, but only in its purest sense. What has been made of his teaching will not be able to survive in a greater community context to any great degree. His emphasis on devotion, on forgiveness, on tolerance and on spiritual identity has permanent value. Here we must distinguish between the founder of a faith and the establishment of the religion that is built upon that faith. Christianity is a religion for humanity with a human God and a human emphasis. It cannot account for life in the greater community. In order for this to happen, its theology will have to change and expand.